Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's always good when we praise God. It's always good when we shout hallelujah unto our God. Amen. Because it's great. Amen. Because he do good things unto us. Amen. Because he keeps us all day long. Amen. He takes us from home to school. Amen. He takes us from school back home. Amen. Nothing happens to us. We don't get sick. Amen. And we're always strong. That's why we shout hallelujah unto our God. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we're going to start this service with a prayer. Amen. Because uh, everything, every time we come into the house of God, amen, we always bring our needs before him. Our, our requests, you know, for our classmates, our friends, our neighbors, you know, people that we know that need prayer, that may be sick, amen, that may be, go through some problems. If you have a little friend or some anyone that you may think of, maybe sometimes our parents, I mean, we need to pray for them. And then we as young people, I mean, we have to always pray, you know, for one another, pray for our friends and pray for our families. And anyone that may come through your mind, I mean, this is the moment here in this service that you may come forward, I mean, feel free to come forward, I mean, and then, uh, and then you will pray and ask God, Okay, you know, to touch your friend, to heal your friend, to heal, to heal your, your neighbors, anyone who's, you know, uh, going through a difficult, a difficult time. This is the moment of our service, so we should come forward. Amen. I encourage you to come here and uh, don't be afraid. And, uh, and we will pray with you. Amen. And, uh, and God will hear your prayer. Amen. Guess what? He will hear your prayer. And then uh, he will heal your neighbor. He will heal your friend. He will heal your classmate. Praise God. And uh, and he will bless you more of them. Okay? Things that will be asking God to do for you. Okay? Uh, God will protect you. So, you know, I invite young people up here now. Come forward. And then if you have any prayer need. And then, uh, and then we'll pray for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need a prayer. Amen. Oh, I need a prayer. I need a touch from God. Praise God. I need God to do a lot of things in my life. Amen. I need God to help me, to give me strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, let, and all of us, let's, let's bow our head and let's pray. Amen. Let's pray for everyone here. Okay. That God will touch them. That God will answer their prayer. Praise God. Amen. And that God will, will heal those who are sick. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Good. Are you excited? Yeah. Give God a high praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Before I let my brother Mike McBeal speak to you guys, I would like to greet you all on behalf of my pastor and the entire church. Amen. It's really a blessing to have you all with us tonight. Yes. Yes. Now for God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have with us Jen Lasco. Praise God. We have Rayla Jones. Yes. We have Lee Nadua. I'm sorry if I pronounced Lee. We have King with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. And of course, we have Brother Mike DeVito. Amen. God. Amen. Amen. This may be uh, your first visit, but please don't make it your last. Amen. Doors are always open for you, and we'll be more than glad to have you again. Amen. 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 Some people may be here for Brother Mike DeVito, but let me also inform to you that the reason why he is here is because of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I believe that this man has a special word for us tonight, and I am excited to welcome him here tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is now time for our offering, and after the offering, I'll give to you our speaker, Mike Vito. Praise God, man. Amen. <laughs> Jet, but not Tim Tebow, so I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so my plan for tonight is just to go through my testimony, tell you how I came to know Jesus, uh, and then we can open up for questions and stuff like that, and whatever you guys want to do. Uh, but again, I'm very grateful to be here. Let me tell you a little bit how I grew up. I grew up in uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, so small town, rural area. 
But we came from, my, my father came from Brooklyn. My father's name is Vinny. He's from Brooklyn. And he owns a, he owns a construction company. You know? So how many know I wasn't going to be a camp counselor, right? You know, that just wasn't in my DNA. But uh, he, he had a, uh, a saying for us growing up, and it was work hard, party hard. That was, that was the attitude. Uh, so throughout high school, uh, that was what I was about. You know, it was all about, you know, I was going to get good grades. You know, I was going to do well on the football field. That was number one. Doing well on the football field. Then it was getting good grades. Uh, and don't get in trouble. But don't get in trouble didn't mean don't do bad things. <laughs> don't get in trouble didn't mean don't do bad things. It just meant don't get caught doing bad things. <laughs> so, so that was my mindset. And then I and then going into college, God blessed me uh, with the opportunity to play football at the University of Maine. Uh, and I received a scholarship there. And I went into college with that common misconception about what college is about. Uh, you know, well, college, you have four years to get it in because when you get out here in the real world, you ain't going to have fun anymore. So, so get it in now. And, and I took that mindset seriously. I was like, all right, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to put football as my God. That's going to be number one. And then, and then I'm going I'm to live it up. And, and that's what I did. And it was just, there was a mess at times. I mean, I was, it was my sophomore year in college, and I'm living, 19 years old, I'm living with my girlfriend who has two kids. How many know that's a recipe for disaster? I mean, I was abusive. I, I thought to handle things the way my father did. Again, he's been from Brooklyn. So I'm Mike from Brooklyn, so I got to handle it the way he does. And, 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 and football was my God. So everything went into football. You know what I mean? Everything went into football. So if I wasn't doing it on the field, everybody else had to do it. So God knew this. God knew this, and God knows all of us. And he knew, to be, you know, being a football player, I was a little bit hard-headed, so he was going to have to, you know, he, he, he gave me three real revelations of who he was. So the first time, the first one, I'm living with my girl again, I'm in the, I'm in the house, I get a knock at the door, and I look, and it's, it's these guys in white shirts, black ties, you know, missionary guys. And I'm thinking, who are these nerds coming right now to talk to me and tell me about something? So I said, okay, whatever, you know, they knock, like, hey, we'd like to come in and tell you about Jesus. And this is what I like to think of as my, my knowledge phase of my, of my uh, salvation story. Uh, because I had no idea who Jesus was. So I was like, all right, you know, maybe I'll tell them about football, what I'm about, you know, I'm so cool. Uh, so I invite them in, and I'm like, you know, these guys will come in one time, they'll, they'll tell me about Jesus, and then they'll go. So they come in, they tell me about Jesus, that's fine. Uh, and then they leave. And I'm thinking, all right. But then they come back the next week. And they come back the week after. And it's, it's going on three months now that they keep coming back telling me about Jesus. And, and it's starting to sink in a little bit. It's starting to sink in a little bit. I'm starting to realize, okay, you know, there's something to this. I'm starting to look at the Bible. I'm starting to see some things. I'm thinking, okay, this makes, this makes sense, you know. But, but, you know, I like the stuff about God being a loving God, a caring God. But not the stuff that I got to move out of my house with my girlfriend. I don't like that stuff. I don't like the stuff that I got to stop drinking. I don't like that. That's not, that's not what I'm about. So it was, it was my customized version of Christianity. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, I love this, the light and fluffy God that everybody goes to heaven. And that was my second revelation. <clears throat> I had a friend of mine, and you guys know him, Matt Mulligan. He's been Pentecostal his whole life. I mean, he's known Jesus since he was a young buck. And um, he came up to me one day, and we always come and compete and argue and everything like that with best friends. And he said, hey, brother, you know, I know you've been reading and they've been talking to me about Jesus, but they tell you about hell. I was like, hell? I was like, hell's for Hitler, hell's for you, the bomber, hell's not for good moral people, right? That's not for me. And he said, well, bro, what you think is moral and what God thinks is moral, that's two different things. And I was like, man, let me look into this. And I'm, I'm a math mind. I need to see it. You know what I mean? Said, well, okay, show me, because I don't believe that. I know about God. He loves everybody. You know, John 3, 16, right? Mm -hmm. so everybody's gone. And then he starts pulling out scriptures. And this is what I like to think of my acceptance part of it. So I had my knowledge. I'm starting to learn about it. Now the acceptance kicked in. Uh, he, he brought in, he started talking about hell and eternity. And how these decisions and what I'm doing have an eternal effect. And I remember I was supposed to be studying for a test, which was, that's a miracle in itself. But I was at the library, and I was just sitting down, and I couldn't get that out of my mind that there was an eternity and that my, my eternity could be at stake by the way I was living. But again, God knows, football player, hard-headed, he knows that that's not going to be enough. 
So this is what, this was my personal trust. This was my trust. This was when I, I had the knowledge, I had the acceptance of the knowledge, but now it's time to put it into action. So I'm living with my girl, and I, I had this friend uh, who was a great friend of mine. And my football guy, he was, he was, he was one of my guys. He was a football player that I looked up to. You know, Mohawk tattoos, bad dude. Just a bad dude. I, mean, I, I wanted to be like him. And I come home, I get a, uh, I come home, I don't know where I was at. And my girl tells me she's sick. She's crying like that really hardcore crying where you know something's wrong. She says, Mike, your friend's been shot. He's messing around with the wrong people. He's been shot and killed. He's 24 years old. Shot and killed. And I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. So we go, he, he had the funeral in Massachusetts where we go down the funeral. It's about two hours to get to his, get up to the casket. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of people there. And I get up to that casket and I look. And, you know, I look at this man, 24 years old, laying there in the casket. And that was the first time I felt the Holy Ghost cut my heart and said, you know, the Bible says life is but a vapor. Right. Now everything started clicking in. I started to realize, wow, you know, my life's not guaranteed for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not invincible, you know. And that was my eyes opened up. Okay, I need to pursue it. I need to see what's going on. I need to figure this out now. This is real. This is this isn't a joke. I've heard God's voice. I've heard what He's calling me. That part of you know, he's, he's trying to knock, knocking at the door. Amen. I need to open this door. Amen. So I pursued it. I said, okay, what are the next steps? And and I, I started talking to Matt. He said, bro, well, first thing you've got to do is you got to repent. You know, you need to die to your old way, and you need to be reborn to the way God the way God has for you. Amen. So let me tell you about repentance. Repentance was not easy. It's not it's never easy. There's this, there's this dude, I like to relate things to football sometimes. And there's this dude I played against my rookie year named Leonard Davis. He's a guard for the Dallas Cowboys. And this guy looks like this screen right here. I mean, he's just strong. <laughs> and no matter what I did, I, and I pride myself on being a strong dude, no matter what I did, I could not beat this guy. I could, he would overpower me every time. And that's what repentance is like for me. It was so hard to to overcome some of the things I was doing. And repentance literally means to stop which is to stop doing one thing and doing 180 degrees and walk the other way. Amen. So this was this was me. I'd say, okay, Lord God, forgive me for drinking beer. Forgive me for getting drunk. You know, I'm so sorry. I need to get better. 180 degree, right back to the refrigerator, open it up, six back, let's go. You know, that's what repentance was about. I just couldn't get through it. And and I here's the realization I came to. And I compare it to my wife. We were talking about video games with these young guys. I love video games. Before I got married, Matt and I, we'd stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> years of war, all that. And when, my, when I got married, my wife said, Babe, I want to be spending time with you at night. I can't have you playing video games all the time. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to hang out with you and spend time with you. And I was like, and then and I relate that to repentance because here's the deal. That was not easy for me because I love my wife. Yeah. You know, I've grown a relationship with my life. I loved her. So those video games, even though I wanted to do them, they fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Jesus. Amen. The more we pursue a loving relationship with God, the easier it will be for that stuff to fall away. Yeah. It's not just about not doing something. It's, it's about I love you, so I'm not going to do it because I care more about you. Yeah. And that was real revelation that really help me. And I still struggle. You know, we all struggle. But we have to get down and make sure that we're always going back saying, Lord, forgive me. I still play video games all night sometimes. My wife gets mad. She gets mad. But we got to continue to repent. So that was my first thing. The second thing that I figured out I had to do uh, and learn in the pursuit of God was get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And Here's what I compare this to. I remember the first time, I went to a small school at the University of Maine. We didn't have our names on our jerseys. We just had our money. The first time I got to the NFL, I went, it was the first preseason game, and I went to my locker room and I saw my name on my jersey. What an amazing moment. I still remember, it's like that DeVito on that jersey. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, that, that's something. When you get baptized, you put on that jersey with the name of all names. Yeah. Now you're wearing that yeah. I'm proud of that church. Oh, yeah. So I went into church, and this is kind of a twofold thing. I'll get into this, but anybody who's been in the United Pentecostal Church knows if you're not saved, well, you're getting baptized. 
whether you like it or not, you're getting baptized. Amen. So I was in church, you know, went down and boom, right in the water, come in, Jesus' name, I'm out, I'm reborn. Love it. And I, I'm so grateful for it. And then the last thing was I needed the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I, and I, I really feel that it's about pursuing the giver and not the gift. But let me, again, talk about being in the United Pentecostal Church. I went to mock this. I went to mock it. Like, people are speaking in tongues. People are running around the church. People are falling out. I'm like, come on. You got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> so, so I go to church. And I'm like, I just got to check this out. I got to see it. I got to see what's going on. And I'm sitting, probably I go in, I'm sitting right about here, right? And I'm looking. And as the service is going on, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I have got to go out here. I was back here. Okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Right? But again, how many know I wasn't going to be able to stay back there? Because God doesn't care about our company. He cares about, you know, our His plan for us. Amen. So they, you know, they came and got me. I didn't have a choice. I was like, guys, I'll be good. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, like, uh, you're, coming, you're coming up to the altar. You know, altar call, that's everybody. That's everybody. You know? Amen. And I went up there, and God put his hand, or, uh, uh, the head pastor put his hand on it. And I just remember it as like electricity. And, and guys, here's the deal. My mind, again, I'm a mathematical, rational guy. I, and I'm not smart enough to conjure up feelings.